Welcome to Ilmu Kebidanan dan Kemajiran Lecture Podcast for this 2021-2022 UAS session. We from Group 4 would like to first introduce ourselves. My name is Alyssa Dayan, name B0419-8037. My name is Kasia Danawati, name B0419-8022. My name is Nicole Ki Wang Sing, name B0419-8028. And our topic for today is reproductive surgery on male animals, which includes anesthesia, penile deviation, epididymectomy, castration, and vasectomy. Now, before we get started, just like before, I would like to know how everyone's doing today. Perhaps you guys are stressing about upcoming exams. We have OAS and UPRAC, and I'm already discussing my scripty topic. And as if that wasn't uh, enough to stress about, we also have this whole KKN thing, which personally for me is, is quite stressful. So what do you guys think? Yeah, it was quite an adventure last Saturday when we had to fight to get our desired location. Uh, speaking of KKN, where do you guys get? I got Chikude though. Oh, I got somewhere in West Java, Karawang. I think, I, I'm not sure, I've never been anywhere in West Java outside of Jabodetabek, so this should be interesting. Uh, what about you, Pia? I'm actually doing mine in Malaysia. Oh, that's, that's cool. Yeah. Well, yeah, clearly these next few months are going to be so hectic. Um, but then again, when is it not hectic, honestly? I mean, the life of a wet student, am I right? Exactly. That's exactly what it is. Speaking of hacker, our topic for this podcast is quite complicated. Do you think so? Yeah, totally. So let's get back to the purpose of this podcast today. Our topic focuses on reproductive surgeries in male animals. I hope you guys are ready and you prepped for this. So perhaps I should start off by explaining more about the anesthesia part because general knowledge anesthesia is needed in almost all major surgical procedures in animals. So we have three types, um, epidural, general, and local anesthesia. But today uh, we're going to focus on epidural and local anesthesia. Now for epidural, I think most people would have heard of this type of anesthesia more so in females, both humans and animals, um, as this is typically used in birthing or partis. So contrary to popular belief, epidurals are also used in male animals for certain surgeries. Um, and one that we will discuss later on is castration. So what exactly is an epidural? An epidural is a very common anesthesia technique in larger animals and in livestock. There are two orientation zones with epidurals, meaning the, the zone of administration, uh, cranial and caudal. So if, it, if administered cranially, it is between the first coccygeal bone and the sacral bone. And, and if through the caudal region, it is between the first, second, and third coccygeal bones. What drugs are used for epidural anesthesia? That would be lidocaine, procaine, and ones that are common in our faculty labs would be xylazine and ketamine, which are usually administered as a combination. Um, now for local anesthesia, we learned a few types from some of our subjects previously. So local anesthesia, it includes L blocks, which are most commonly used in livestock surgery, as well as nerve blocks and ring blocks. But like, how does the local anesthesia like differ from epidurals? I might have missed mentioning this before, but they do differ quite significantly. So epidurals are administered to the epidural spaces, whereas local anesthesia, uh, in particular, the L blocks uh, are deposited in several layers, which include the uh, subcutaneous tissue and the muscular layers of the abdominal wall. 
L blocks are deposited in an inverted L configuration, hence the name L block. Ah, oh yeah, I remember that from one of our lectures. Thanks for the info, Lisa. What about you, Nicole? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, thank you for information, Lisa. I know there are several types of reproductive surgeries on male animals. And problems in the reproductive tract of animal may result in difficulty or inability to copulate, so leading to economic losses. So among these diseases, premature penile deviation or PPD is a very important cause of counting impotency that affect male bovines of several breeds and different ages. Oh, great. Thank you for the introduction about uh, penile deviation. What about the uh, surgery to treat PPD? Yeah, in the case of acquired PPD, the main surgical treatment protocols are is aimed to fix the penile apical ligament in the tunica albuginea or to strengthen or replace it with the aid of synthetic or biologic implants. Uh, so the latter approach has been receiving attention lately due to its lower cost and decreased potential to induce inflammation and rejection response, which is chitosan, a polysaccharide derived from chitins, the decetylation by chemical and enzymatic processes has been used for several in vivo biological applications such as wound healing and tissue repair because its biodegradability and biocompatibility. Um, I heard you made some study about the surgical procedure to correct penile deviation. Can you explain that in detail? Okay, based on the literature study that I have read through, the bull was first updated with 2% silazine at 0.05 ng per kg associated with 1% of acipromazine hydrochloride at 0.05 ng per kg, both by intravenous injection followed by local regional blockage of the pudendal and hemorrhoidal nerves. So physical restraint is also important. It was performed in the right lateral recumbency Thus, the pineal free extremity was exposed for cleaning and antisepsis of the glands and internal prepucial mucosa with polyvipyroidum iodine solution. So, after exposure of the penis, an 8 centimeter long longitudinal incision was made in the pineal tegument in the middle third of the dorsal surface of the glands approximately one centimeter from the caudal extremity of the glands column and ending one centimeter before the insertion of the internal sheet of the prepuce. So after the incision of the tegument, a space was created with blunt dissections of surrounding connective tissue to insert the implant replacing the apical ligaments of the penis. Uh, after the sterile Polypropylene mass or one chitosan slab was implanted under the pineal albuginia of the bulb. The pineal tegument was sutured with chromic cut guard number 00 in a simple interrupted pattern. The bull will show a certain degree of inflammation after the surgery. Here's a more suitable material for the implantation needed to be discovered and more research is needed. Ah, so what about the second topic that you had, of epididymectomy? Yeah, there actually has two types of epididymectomy. Bilateral epididymectomy is performed to create a non-fertile male that can still identify animal in heat or retain male secondary sex characteristics. Unilateral is performed for unilateral disorder of the epididymis they require removal. Uh, what about like the surgical procedure? Do you know? Yeah, so first of all, the preoperative analgesic administration is recommended to minimize pain and inflammation. And lidocaine is used to block the cord 
or the surgical site. A cock block avoids distortion of the surgical site. A ring block around the cord can help with anesthesia, injection along the proposed incision line and into the epididymis is quite is quick and effective, but those alter the it, but it does alter the anatomy. So the bowl can be restrained by a cut with the butt bar in place. The upper leg should be pulled forward to expose the scrotum. The scrotum is clipped and scrubbed before and after the local block. So after all the preparation is done, a clean towel or sterile drag can be placed under the scrotum and the animal's abdomen for structural management. The incise over the, over the tail of the epididymis expose both the site in which it is connected to the testicle and the connection to the narrow wall ductus deference. Dissect through the skin until you can see the epididymal bulk. Expand the incision so you can see where the epididymis end and the testicle is visible. So you can continue your incision through the vaginal tunic, exposing the epididymis. One side will connect to the ductus and has a relatively narrow area to ligate. The other side connects to the testicle and is going to be harder to define where the best place you suture. So it doesn't matter the discontinuity you are creating in the important part, find one side and like it, repeat on the other side and dissect the epididymis free from the testicle and remove it. Finally, close either the tunic or the skin using three to zero or smaller absorbable suture in a continuous pattern. Yeah, this all. Well, that is quite interesting. Thank you, Nicole, for all that info. Um, now, Priya, I would like to know more about castration and vasectomy. So maybe castration first, you know, you could tell us more about that. So castration, as we all know, is the removal of testicles, which have a few indications like um, estrus detection, arthritis, or tumor, and fattening. I see. So how's the process like, though? So like castration is divided into two stages. So there's one with bleeding and without bleeding. So the castration without bleeding involves tying the spermatic cord with rubber and either left for like a long period or clamped using a bardizo plier. Whereas the castration with bleeding involves restraining the animal in a special cage uh, induced with general or local anesthesia uh, and the animal has to be lying on the side when you perform it. And a lateral or horizontal incision is done to the testicle where the lateral incision is performed on the side of the scrotum, like next to the animal's leg. And the horizontal incision is where the incision is performed below the testicles. So depending on like which type of incision is performed, remove the testis and spermatic cord and tie it before cutting it and remove the testicles and just sew the area up. I see. So are there any risks involved? Yeah, there's risk such as like pain, swelling, bleeding and infection, uh, which may occur, but it can be reduced by using proper techniques, clean tools, um, adhering to a proper vaccination protocol and castrating animals when they are young. Oh, that's that's interesting. So uh, thank you for uh, info about castration. Yeah, so moving on to the final topic, vasectomy. Can you tell us more about that as well? So vasectomy is mainly performed to identify cows in asterisk and to prevent ejaculation. So like in general, a local anesthesia administered, the animal is laid on their side and a longitudinal incision is performed along the spermatic cord. And the vas deferens is identified and removed where they surgically cut and partially lifted before the area is sewn up. Uh, so for vasectomies, are there any risk involved for this procedure? Yeah, the risk involves like um, yeah, removing the incorrect suture, particularly in young and younger animals, where accidental damage to the piriform plexus, which can cause hemorrhage and sperm granulomas can occur. Okay, thank you for the answer, Priya. I think... We covered a lot of aspects for the topics that we had 
originally planned, which is good. So uh, what did you guys think of today? No, I think it's great for today's discussion and I've learned a lot from today's section. Yeah, it was like great and informative for me too. Yeah, okay. I think we can now wrap this up. Uh, thank you for joining us in our podcast today. Uh, goodbye and have a nice day. Bye, guys.